This shows the vast array of varieties of diamonds. There are things on this table that I've never seen before. If you had to tell me a rough estimate, of how much do we have here? I'd say we've got around $15 million <laughs> of diamonds on the table. everyone, welcome to another unboxing. Today is a super special unboxing because Andrew and I are actually in front of a live studio audience here at our headquarters and we are so excited to have you here. This is Andrew Schlesinger, he's a sixth generation diamond dealer and we are so thankful to have you on the channel again. Well thank you for having me here and I'm very excited to start showing you what we have in these boxes. So. Do you, want to, do you want to go to the first one? Let's get to it. Because this is the live JTV experience, we definitely felt the pressure to up our game a little bit. So in this first box, there is a $5 million diamond. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and we challenge you to see if you can find it. <laughs> oh my goodness, okay. Out of all of these, <laughs> we have one, two, three, four, Five, six. My goodness, Andrew. <laughs> and are, they're all colored. They are all colored diamonds. These are f natural, fancy colored diamonds. A lot of them could, on their own, buy you a house, but the $5 million one could buy you a house in the Hamptons. <laughs> <laughs> so brown is a fairly common fancy color, but actually because of its size, I'm gonna keep it in the running. Okay. Brown diamonds get their brown color from uh, structural defects. Some of the other diamonds here that are super rare also share that same property in getting their color, and those would be the pinks and reds. Which I know are pretty nice. Mm -hmm. I love that little heart. Oh, Can y'all see that, yeah. the heart? Yellow in diamonds and the orange in diamonds come from trace elements of nitrogen. So you have some beautiful ones here from Brazil. And then the blue, I think that's green. Mm -hmm. Is that A lot of these green? got bluish green in their GIA certs. To my eye, they look more blue. The color blue in diamonds is from trace elements of boron. And when you get some hydrogen in there, you'll have something a little more violet or purplish. I have an idea. Okay, okay. I'm gonna narrow it down, and then I think you guys are gonna help me decide. I'm gonna start taking some away to narrow. All right. Let's move these aside. I'm gonna keep the pinks and reds. I'm gonna move these there. Let's play a game. Yeah. Who thinks it's, it's one of these? Okay. We so get applause. What about these blues? Okay, so we've got some there. Okay. What about the brown? <laughs> I like your confidence. <laughs> we have one for the brown. Yes. It is kind of hard without a loop. Sure, yes. I will tell you that I don't believe any of these are imperfect in quality. They're all SI or better. I'm gonna go. This is stressful. <laughs> Would you like to narrow it down to two? Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's bring them down to one in the red category and one in the blue category. I... Mm. The certificate on this is probably more of a pinkish purple, even though I'm calling it red. Uh, so I don't know if that leans you in one direction or the other. The cert on this one is a bluish green. Okay. I think I'm going to go with bluish green. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Pinks and reds are very valuable, yes. especially with the Argyle Mine closure. And yes, in 2020, the Argyle Mine closed, and a lot of these beautiful colors are going to be harder and harder to find. But these blues are super rare, and this is a 2.32 carat. Oh my goodness. Look at that. The green in diamonds is from natural radiation inside the Earth. So normally you'll get pock marks on the skin. Those pock marks are the, the green radiation really gets into the stone. Green stones in general, when they have that radiation inside of them, are really electric, as you can plainly see in this stone. Yeah. That's amazing. We believe that this is from Brazil, but we've found interesting material like this from Indonesia as well. So this is not for sale? This is for sale for $5 million. <laughs> it might be fun to lift up a few and read out their value on the back. Ooh, oh, yes. <laughs> okay, so the brown one is not cheap. Nope. Let's play a little bit of over under. Let's say this is $95,000. More or less. Over? Okay, we're at 110. Let's go with the red one. This is 0.88 carats. Over or under 500,000. 
We're at 450,000. A value. <laughs> <laughs> the orange, that is a very vibrant color. Yes, it is. I really like that. And they're very rare, although they haven't gotten a lot of popularity. So keep that in mind when you're thinking of the over under here. Okay. Is that a comma? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so this is 1.06 carats, over under 45,000. Over. We're at 70,000. Well, Rebecca, if you enjoyed this box, I, I really think you're going to be excited about the next box. I <laughs> believe you. Let's see it. <gasps> jewelry! <laughs> and here we have a lot of these fancy colors. Oh my god. Set gosh. in jewelry. This one is obviously a stunner. The that pear is. shape, y'all like that one? <laughs> this is actually a fancy intense green that has that coloring inside of it that I was talking about. Set here with argyle pinks around it. This was photographed on many people's hands here. <laughs> <laughs> Gemstones are a limited resource. Yes. And especially when you see mines like the Argyle mine in Australia closing where that's, you know, what, 99, 95% of the world's pink diamonds. It makes pieces like that so much more Very interesting, special. so much more special. There is a lot of pink coming out of Russia, but it's lower quality material and does not replace what we were getting from Argyle for certain. Okay, so is that rough? <laughs> and that is rough, yeah. That is so fun. That's a vile necklace that we're hoping to start selling on Jadora. It is a five carat rough diamond necklace in 14 carat yellow gold with a cap of polished diamonds for a crown. That is beautiful. This one really caught my eye. So you have like a grayish blue, mm -hmm. a green, and an orange. And that can be yours <laughs> for $972,000. Your company is called Rough Diamond Twirl. Yes. But obviously these are faceted. We do faceted, rough, we do recycled diamonds, everything diamond out there. I think I should wear some of the rings. I, I think that's yeah, appropriate. Yeah, yeah. That, <laughs> I think that would be only fair. I like it. <laughs> and now you have appropriate hands for box number three. Excellent. Oh my goodness, look at that. This is a celestial box. Celestial. <laughs> the natural rough diamonds that you are pulling out right now are naturally intertwined cubes that form the shape of stars. They're like starfish. Yeah, yeah. And you have a few colors here, colorless, yellowish, brown. They are in this box with carbonado and meteor impact diamonds. That is too cool. You're gonna have to explain that. So carbonados are a polycrystalline diamond. All diamonds that are formed on Earth are single crystalline. Dr. Stephen Haggerty is the leading scientist in studying carbonados, and it is his theory that these formed in supernovas and came to Earth in meteorites. Now these diamonds were formed on the surface of the Earth by meteor impact. Recently, there was a paper done in Colorado where the scientists there theorized that the surface of Mercury was covered with diamonds because of meteor impacts and no atmosphere to protect the planet. Wow. Yeah. And I imagine this is what those diamonds would look like. Oh, that is too cool. And they look like little slivers or yeah. sheets. Flakes. Yes, yeah. flakes. This, I think, shows the, the vast array of varieties of diamonds. We love to talk about all diamonds and all the colors and varieties. It's part of our passion and our storytelling, as you know, and uh, maybe a good segue into box number four. Excellent. Okay. Oh, you guys are going to absolutely love these. Andrew has an amazing collection of rough diamonds that look like different things. Some of these I haven't seen. These you have not seen. We've brought you here our Mickey Mouse collection. <laughs> oh, that is too cute. Ruff and his friends are big fans of Disney. Ruff the Diamond Dog and his friends got proper stands and thrones. Is it, that is not the cutest thing. I think it's important to emphasize these were found like this. These were not faceted in this form. They have not been worked on in any way. They came out of the ground this way. We wrote the book Ruff's Diamond World on that. The Super Six are right there. We've got Dandy the Diamond Duck. Carrot the rabbit, Kitty the carbon cat, Ganesh the elephant, and then Einstein the brilliant bear. That is so cool. I love that. Ruff is from Botswana along with Kitty. Dandy is from Russia. Ganesh was from Sierra Leone. Einstein is from Canada. Carrot the rabbit was from South Africa. We find diamonds all over the world. Look at that one. Mm -hmm. What is going on there? I see an ape in that one. Okay, I see that. That's our dolphin. Dolphin. <laughs> 
Mind you, we do have disagreements on what these shapes are in the office. That's, that has to be a peng penguin. That is a penguin, okay, that's right. Okay, a penguin. The penguin is a good segue into the second book, currently being illustrated and hopefully will be ready close to the time this episode is airing. So the book addresses synthetic diamonds. So the wizard from the first book marches out his synthetic diamond making machine, starts popping out D flawlesses. D flawless feels a little taken aback and Ruff sees this and tells him that he shouldn't be upset by synthetics being out there, that his story is different than the story of synthetic diamonds. And then we go into talking about where diamonds come from and how they come to us through the earth and volcanic activity. Alluvial diamonds, we have a whale in there somewhere. Oh, I definitely see the whale. Alluvial diamonds travel through rivers after they explode out through the earth. So I think it's important to say that you know, mined diamonds and, and lab-grown diamonds, they all have a place. They do. They're on different journeys. And, yeah. uh, synthetic diamonds are going to be helping us more and more in technology. Yeah. They're going to eventually hit a value where they are able to be used in semiconductors efficiently. They'll be possibly spaceship windows. It's fantastic where it's going. And in jewelry, you'll have beautiful, affordable jewelry using lab-grown diamonds. But the natural diamonds are things that have been around on the earth for over a billion years. And the things that they've seen and can teach us are different than synthetic diamonds. That's the fun thing about jewelry and gemstones. There really is something for, for everyone, for there every is. purpose. And there's so much variety out there. There are things on this table that I've never seen before. Anyone who's been in the industry for any amount of time knows that you really can never know it all. You're always able to be surprised by something new and different. It's just so fun to be a part of. Diamonds and gemstones are powerful on every level from the cheap to the most expensive. You know, speaking of expense, if you had to tell me a rough estimate of the amount of diamonds from a monetary perspective on this table, how much do we have here? Well, some of these stones are priceless as they are not for sale, so that's difficult to put the value into. But apart from, let's say, the animal collection, I'd say we've got around $15 million <laughs> of diamonds on the table. This might be a record, actually, on our channel. We had to outdo ourselves for the JTV experience. It. Oh my <laughs> goodness. So as y'all know, we take a closer look at some of our favorite specimens from the episode, and I, I can't not pick this one, the $5 million green diamond. So take a closer look. I feel super fortunate to have seen these and touched these, and we're so grateful that you brought them here for us to see. This is the true value of any kind of gemstone, is being able to share it, share your stories, share your experiences. It's been a very powerful experience being here. Thank you. So thanks for everyone. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell so you don't miss out on any of our future videos. Thanks for watching. Thank you so much.